Hello there. Um, let's try to do a pre-roll pretty quickly. Um, I have this asset right here. Let's say we have the, to do the simulation of this code or something, and I have some setup or Vellum thing or whatever going. And then an animator just published an animation, and it comes just like that. This is my animation. It doesn't have any pre-roll. It starts on frame 1001, but you know, I just chose like 980, 20 frames uh, pre-roll, but you can just wherever you want. But you can see we have no pre-roll there, so we have to match this character with this character to start doing the animation. So first thing first, we need to match the wall position. This is pretty easy to do. So I have this guy and this guy. I just blast everything but the bullet. Just okay. Everything but the body. And I, I, I did a time shift here to be sure that I'm just using the first um, frame of the animation. And then I created a group like that. You can see this kind of group right there, where I did some kind of a cross in a place that I thought that is not moving that much, really. And as you can see, the hips are facing over and you need to find some place like that, some some points that are like facing forward and I have like this kind of cross across the, the body that really represents the facing, um, the direction uh, the character is facing. So I created that group, I just copied that group around here and I blast them both. So now I have these points and those points are over there and just extract the transformations. I use a transform matrix, so we have this transform attribute, 16 float um, matrix, and we can grab the body, everything else, copy this attribute as a transform. This will be 16 float matrix, and we just use the transform by attribute using this attribute. So we have this character, which was the one in the origin, and positioned more or less on the same position that the animation starts. So that's great. We have the wall match, wall space match, and let's try to match the pose. I've seen some people doing something like that. So we have this one and this one. Let's do a blend shape between them. The problem with that is that the blend shape is a linear deformer. So in between, you have this kind of crazy stuff because it's just trying try to imagine like a linear, like a really straight line between the, this point, this position of this point, and this position of this point. So a straight line will look like that, and we lose a lot of volume here, we lose uh, the length of the forearm, everything is not really good. I'm liking what's happening with the legs, they will work as a pre-roll, also the torso and the body, but not the arms, but either so I will do everything, and then you can blend it together if you want. So what I did for that is I just created um, some point groups right there. They are all named ref something. And it's pretty important to create it, to create everything ordered. Create order means that, well, as you can see, the points that I selected, I guess that you can see that. Let's just put some uh, points pretty big. Okay, so I tried to find some points in the geometry that more or less represents where the joints in the rig would be. So we have these points and maybe we have those points. You can see we have same thing with the leg. Well, in that arm, I just put a couple of them because I was losing some volume and something like that, something like that. It's really, really fast. You can do that like in a couple of minutes. And same thing with that. And again, keep in mind, create order, because if not, you can select all those points in order. Like this is the first one, the second one, third one, and then the last one. And then when we create a line, a curve from then, it will be like a messy one. So create order, pretty important. So at the end of everything, oh, you can see a lot of them working like that. Nice, great. I have also some that someone some points there. And you, I just copy the groups there so I can blast all the points and create an add. For blasting, I just use ref, that's why I call them ref, an asterisk, and 
with the ads by group, rep, asterisk, each group separately, and because they are um, ordered that way, we have this and this. We can blend them together with a blend shape, but it will happen exactly the same as happened right here. So what I use is a wire blend. Why? Because the wire blend tries to keep the length of each one of those segments of a curve exactly the same. So what we get is this kind of rotating nice interpolation between them because it's trying to get there by rotating and not by a linear interpolation. So I have the same length everywhere. So this is working pretty nicely. I just did a resample with some twenty points, something like that. You can you have to be careful here. Just try to get, keep it straight because it's how it's more or less deformed. And then I just created a, a sweep. Why a sweep and why not a um, poly wire or whatever? The sweep node is really fun. You can play with it and create round tubes, square tubes. You can create a lot of things. I just went for square tubes right there. You can change those guys. You can also change those guys. You can change a lot of things. But the thing that is really important is the up vector. You know, right now I have the Z up vector. Let's see what happens with the curve normal. This is what would happen with the poly wire if you don't change the the up vector of the vector itself. So you can see this is moving pretty weirdly and is doing pretty weird stuff. So it's not it's not going to work at all. Let's just keep it with the Z axis. Maybe the Y axis will work all, all the same. But now I have a nice geometry deforming there. So let's just create a time shift and a point deform. And now we have this. This guy is doing nice rotation. I'm still losing a little bit of volume there, but I really don't care. There's some points that are going pretty crazy. Don't worry about that. We can get the original animation starting point. This is the starting point and then goes there to uh, create a delta mass and use it as a reference. So this is my delta mass right here and you can see this is much, much better. And we have this rotation uh, transformation here, which is pretty great for a for a pre-roll and then just for finishing it I'm doing a blend shape and I'm animating that so from 1001 onwards it's going to be 100% this animation that we already have but like halfway from the pre-roll something like that 90 or something I just put it at zero and then we have this kind of smooth transition not really that smooth you can see at the end we have some change of volumes on the on, on the shoulders, but it will work pretty well as a nice pre-roll. You can play with that, you can just fix it, you can blend it with the blend shape, you can do whatever you want, but this is one technique. Let me know if you have another one, but I think it works pretty well. So at the end of everything, we can do exactly the same thing with the, with the cloth itself, just grabbing the cloth, it's not moving, just the match, the wall position match. We match everything, so we have this guy, which is the one with our new pre-roll. Really, really great. Just do a point of form here, and if you don't like the shapes or, any, or everything, you can do the same thing with the delta mesh. I animated the delta mesh right there, and I also did a blend shape to have exactly the same thing. So from uh, 1001 until the end is going to be 100% of the animation we have, and we're just playing with the volumes and stuff in the pre-roll to get nice volumes and nice reference for starting simulating this guy. So this is all. I hope it's going to be a little bit um, useful for you and thank you very much.